Hey everyone, it's Owen here from OTEC and today I'll be doing an unboxing of the ECS B350AM4-M2 motherboard. Now this is a pretty uh, cheap B350 motherboard. It's relatively affordable, but I'm not sure about the quality. It might be still pretty good, but anyways, this is one of the more affordable B350 motherboards out there. And even though it's you know not the most expensive motherboard since it's AMD it's actually overclockable since AMD allows overclocking on both the B350 and X370 motherboards they just don't allow overclocking on the um, on the A320 cheaper super cheap uh, chipset so here's the box itself on the outside you can see that there's uh, this features I guess and also the specifications of what's on the board as in the ports and stuff um, and here's the ports itself on the back and the box actually is pretty nice you know in my opinion and here it is uh, it's also have it also has a 16 month uh, warranty so that's uh, that's pretty good I guess that's pretty long and yeah let's take a look inside and you know the box itself is kind of flashy so seeing this board now I actually feel like it <laughs> it is actually you know not as flashy as I expected it so on the bottom uh, here's the user manual and stuff also you have the driver CD don't use that just use the latest chipset drivers from AMD Dot com website and here are some SATA cables you got straight SATA cables for both of them which is kind of interesting because most of these motherboards includes one right angle one but it's not a big deal also a plain silver uh, backplate which is uh, kind of you know well pretty much predictable since it's a pretty cheap uh, motherboard so yeah um, let's take a look at the board itself Here it is. So here you can see that the board is actually pretty plain, you know. It looks kind of dated because it has this white socket, but otherwise it's uh, actually a pretty good layout in my opinion. Save for the fact that the M.2 is here because I would have preferred it to be somewhere here or even like on the bottom here instead of being here because it's right under the graphics card here so it's gonna be difficult to replace your M.2 drive with it in there but otherwise it's got two PCIe X16 slots although the bottom one is only running at uh, I believe X4 2.0 from the chipset the top one is X16 3.0 straight from the CPU and you've got also two more X1 slots 2.0 from the chipset on the right you get four RAM slots so these are DDR4 slots and these can operate at 2133 although you can obviously overclock it and get more performance anything that's above 2133 megahertz on the memory is overclocking so you, you see the ratings on the memory that are above that it's overclocking so for the CPU itself it has some power phases on this side so it looks like it's got four CPU phases and also two SOC phases so the SOC part is what drives the APU uh, graphics uh, side on the APUs and also the PCI controllers and memory controllers. So these is what handles those. These are what handles the core power. So, you know, one thing is that it's nice that they have four, um, seems like real phases because I don't see any phase doubling or anything. And that's nice. It's got four phases, although the only thing I would complain about is that it doesn't have a heatsink, so I wouldn't know how cool uh, how cool it'll, it'll stay. Although Ryzen doesn't suck a lot of power, so you'd probably be fine with an 1800X even. Just don't overclock it, because you can see here it's only got one 4-pin. So this will do pretty good for like the quad-core Ryzen's up to like the 1500X, and you can still overclock those to the, to the max, I guess. Should be still fine. But for the 6 core and 8 core, 1600 and above, I'm saying you shouldn't use this board to overclock. If you're just using for stock frequencies, any chip should work just fine. On this side, you got 24 pin, and on the 
bottom side near the chipset you got four SATA ports these are SATA 3 ports so 6 gigabit per second also two M.2 slots like I showed and also here it is uh, the chipset heatsink and on the bottom you got some USB uh, connectors um, and also well USB-C connector I guess so that's kind of interesting not all motherboards have these uh, even the newer ones so th this cheap one having that is actually pretty cool so on this side you got a like fan connector on the bottom and also some other miscellaneous ports and also the audio port and for the fan ports you can see that there's one on top for the CPU and then there's one on the side and also one on the bottom and I don't see anyone on this side so that's kind of interesting sometimes they have that there and on the back panel the IO consists of PS2 ports so that's nice to see good for diagnosing problems a VGA port for APUs and display port and HDMI which is also for APUs so if you're using a Ryzen processor these won't work um, and you also got four USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports and a LAN port and also the audio input and outputs and you know I find it interesting they have a USB-C internal connector but don't have an external USB-C connector on the back but yeah that's it for this board uh, let's just take a look at it I think I covered all of the important features it's got aim for socket obviously with a normal lever mechanism and also normal M4 mounting for the cooler but yeah um, I guess uh, that's it oh, well you can also as a side note you can use crossfire graphics cards on this uh, just not SLI but crossfire will work just fine uh, but yeah other than that uh, I think that's it for this unboxing thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a like if you do and please click subscribe if you want to see more of my future videos thanks for watching